Welcome everyone to this episode of the Gretchen Casey Show, where I talk to real people in the field of real estate who are not only experts, but they are generous and willing to share their knowledge and their wisdom with us here. And the goal of the show is to gain some information and tips so you can reach your goals in owning real estate or being a professional and to take some of the guesswork out of what to do or who to call in the process. And today I am grateful to have Marlon Shaw with me. And Marlon is an award-winning inspirational speaker, a certified speaking coach, and the founder of Speak and Grow Your Business. He teaches entrepreneurs and business professionals to use speaking as a marketing strategy to stand out from their competition and to attract more clients and grow their business. His entrepreneur, entrepreneurial speaking solution combines the art and science of world-class speaking strategies and techniques into a system that is easy to under, understand and put to immediate use to create unique messages for the marketplace, signature stories that sell, and profitable presentations. I have known Marlon for a number of years through networking events, and when I needed some help last year, uh, I was going to say last year, but early this year, uh, in March, I had a presentation and I really wanted it to be a good quality presentation. So I hired Marlon to coach me to be able to present my presentation, and um, I was so thrilled with the results. His help made the event fun for me. I made me feel confident about what I was presenting and how I was presenting it. And it was a, a really excellent decision to work with Marlon. So thank you, Marlon. Well, thank you for having my, uh, having you on the show. And it was a pleasure working with you as well. Awesome. You're a great client to work with. And I'm well, so excited you. for you for all the things that you're currently doing now with speaking. Yeah, you. thanks to you. I might have been too nervous before. So it's awesome and please you can introduce yourself and tell us a little more about what you do and who you help and sure. your business well i mean you, your introduction covered the, the the most important part because i am a speaker and a speaking coach i just want to make that clear because i'm not involved in the real estate market or the mortgage business but i do work with professionals that are involved in the financing of um, you know financial markets mortgages real estate and it's really about helping entrepreneurs and business professionals, how do you speak in effectively in the marketplace? More importantly, how can they use speaking as a marketing strategy? Because I truly do believe that speaking is a powerful marketing strategy that is on the use by a lot of professionals. And especially now with the way things are changing and we have to be online and have a lot more communication, effective communication now is even greater during this COVID period than it probably was before because now we're competing with everyone else that's online, that's speaking and trying to get their message out there. And so my job is, I, and as you know, what it, um, as you have experienced yourself, Gretchen, my job is really to help my clients to speak with confidence. If I, could help, if I could get them to that level where they're comfortable and confident what they're speaking, then that carries over into other aspects of their life. And it allows them to go on and to do bigger and better things like you do with your show now. Yeah, you, you got me going, so it's awesome. And why do you do what you do? What, what's your why? My why is actually twofold. I mean, part of it is that I've been an entrepreneur for many, many years. I, you know, I was an entrepreneur back in the days when the world didn't exist. And, you know, through the struggles of being an entrepreneur, is I've gone through the highs and the lows. You know, I've gone through the highs of having my own gym and having other successful businesses. And I've gone through the lows where I've lost it all, you know, including losing the house and my life savings. So I've sort of gone through that whole, you know, to the hill and the valley and back. And so my, what I do now is really to try to help entrepreneurs to prevent that. But the second part of the why was that in one of the challenges that I had in the business, I was working with a company that specialized in social media marketing. And it was interesting that on their own website, they talked about speaking being a very powerful strategy. And so when I asked them how I could use speaking effectively in my business, they couldn't tell me. So even though they advocated as being a great strategy, no one could tell me. And I was involved with Toastmasters at the time. And I realized that as great as Toastmaster is to help you with your public speaking skill, it doesn't really help you in how to use speaking beyond, you know, the comfortability and be able to use it from a business perspective. And so that actually drove my passion to start learning about speaking from different aspects. So I went through the Dale Carnegie. Uh, with the Toastmasters, I signed up and worked with uh, professional speakers on the their program to be able to learn how to become a professional speaker and then take all those tools and strategies and map them to entrepreneurial needs. 
So I like to refer to myself as an entrepreneur speaking coach because that's really what I focus on is how do we use uh, speaking as entrepreneurs and business professionals within our business to attract more clients and to grow our business. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you what are the benefits up to those who work with you? I think you, maybe you covered it, but is there any aspects in addition to what you've said that about the benefits? I think the benefit, the two, I would say the three key benefit is really the confidence because most people are afraid of public speaking or afraid of the outcome of public speaking. They're not necessarily afraid of speaking. They're usually afraid of the result, meaning that they feel that they're going to make an embarrassment of themselves or they're not going to be comfortable on the stage or they're going to make mistakes when they're on the stage or they may not be sure how to create the right presentation. So that's the first thing that I try to address within my training and my coaching is really to help them become more comfortable with public speaking. And then on top of that, I provide them with tools and strategies that are easy to use and easy to implement. Because again, if, it's called, if, if we give something that's really complex, most people are not gonna do it. And so I've learned as entrepreneur that the best way to help my fellow entrepreneurs and business professionals, if you make it easy to use and easy to implement, then there's a good chance that they'll continue to use it long after they've learned it. And the third part of it, obviously, is the growth of the business. I do believe that when you're speaking about your product or your services or your industry, it's actually elevating your credibility, it's elevating your visibility in the marketplace, and that allows you then to attract more of your ideal clients. Well, I can definitely say your, your work with me is, did have all of those benefits, so. It's, Glad to hear that. Yes, definitely. Um, and I'm using, continuing to use the tools and the tips that you gave me about how to structure my presentation and. All and that's even better. Them. That's even better news because it means that there is simply enough for you to continue to remember how to use them effectively. So that's great. Yeah. So so true. Um, are there some tips to offer that are um, unique to present to doing presentations online versus in person? Yes, and it's unique in the sense that every situation is different, and when you're in person, it's a lot. For me personally, I'll say it's a lot easier because I pick up on the energy of my audience and it's so much easier to read an audience before you start. So when you're, in, when you're doing a, an in-person presentation, you're there early enough, you get to meet people, you get a sense of what people are feeling, you get a sense of the energy, and then that allows you to adapt to the situation and allows you to adapt to, to that particular room. But when you're doing it virtually, you don't have that opportunity. All you see is a lot of faces on there, but you don't know what distraction they have in their own in their own zone. Uh, for instance, I've had to, I had to do presentation when I couldn't even see the audience. I was speaking to the camera. I know people were watching me, but I didn't even have the comfort level of being able to see some faces. And so what that means is then that my energy has to be even greater for virtual speaking, and my enthusiasm has to be greater for virtual speaking because I don't get a chance to read the room. And so I have to create an energy for myself and for the audience. So that's a little bit different in terms of uh, the virtual. But at the end of the day, speaking is speaking. So what are you doing it in person? What are you doing it virtually? I think as, spe as speakers, we should always be prepared to give our best, regardless of what platform we're using. Yeah, well, that's a good point. I need to work on my, before I start these interviews, maybe jump around and get some more enthusiasm. <laughs> And I did that before I got on your interview. I had I, I have my own warm-up sequence that I like to do to get ready when I'm speaking. So whether it's live, in person, or whether it's virtual, I go through the same ritual because I want my mind to always be ready and focused. So I don't want I don't treat either one as being different. I treat them as equally important, and therefore my preparation is the same for both. Okay. Any tips about preparation? Uh, one thing you do or would suggest? Well, one thing that I do for myself personally is, is my phrase. My phrase is, uh, is game on or game day. So every speaking opportunity for me, and I guess it goes back to my days of playing football and being competitive, is that every speaking opportunity for me, I treat it as game day. So as soon as my alarm goes off on that particular day, the first thing I said to myself, all right, it's game day, I'm ready, let's get going. Because really what I'm doing is getting my mind ready. And my, my mind needs to be ready and my body needs to be ready. And yes, I like to do some dancing. I do some jumping around. You know, I do some shot of boxing. Whatever it takes to get my, my physical energy up. But I also have to make sure that my mental energy is up. It's not enough to be physically ready. It's equally important to be mentally ready. And so the, the thought process that we have in our head 
prior to take the stage. And when I say prior to take the stage, I'm not talking about five minutes before. I'm talking about two hours before, three, you know, the, you know, leading all the way up until that final minute. The thought process that we have gone through mentally is very important because that's going to dictate how the outcome of the message we have on the audience. And so both the physical and the mental preparation is key for me. And I try to instill that into my clients as well and telling them that they must make sure that they start getting mentally ready. And in almost two days leading up to the event, I tell them to start getting that process going. Well, I, that is great advice and I am going to do it before my shows because I haven't been doing that. So now I'm going to change my days, my yeah, plan. Yeah. And you will probably notice a huge difference in your energy when you start doing that. And, it will, and I think it will make a difference for your guests as well, too, because they'll probably sense your energy, which means your energy will help their energy to go out to rise as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So um, for people, many people say they get nervous presenting, um, more so maybe in public. I don't know, maybe some people also find it just as nerve-wracking on a screen. But there are some tips to help with those butterflies in the stomach or that nervousness? Yes. This is going to sound weird for a lot of people because it's a butterfly, but I always say that the butterfly are your friends. Welcome the butterflies. Don't actually fight them. Invite them. So instead of fight, invite. And what I mean by that is that the butterflies is your body sending you signal that is releasing certain amount of chemicals to get you ready for something that it deems to be important. If your body didn't think it was important, it wouldn't be releasing chemicals. So when we feel those flutter in the stomach, it's not a bad thing. It only becomes a bad thing when we think of it in a negative way and then we allow fear. And then our body sense that fear and then starts to produce more chemical than we actually need for the occasion. And then that leads to the negative of the shaking and, and stuff like that. So what we really need to do is when we start to feel the butterflies is, is really be able to look at it in a different perspective. So for me personally, when I'm getting ready for a presentation, if I don't feel a butterfly, I'm actually more concerned that I'm not ready than when I feel the butterfly. Because when I feel a butterfly, I just say, great, my body is ready now. I got the amount of uh, adrenaline or the chemical that I need to get me going. Because what that does is that means I'm going to be sharper. If I, allow, if I allow the butterflies to actually work for me, then it actually allows my mind to be sharper and it allows me to be more intuitive, which means that as I'm speaking, my mind will actually give me things to say that I may not have planned on saying, but it's more appropriate at that moment. And so it's a trust factor. So the butterfly means that you have to trust that it's a good thing and don't allow yourself to overreact to the butterfly. I think, what, I think there was one speaker that says, you know, think of the butterflies and just allow them to get into formation and let them fly and lead you into, into victory. So think of it as that way. They're not necessarily here to harm you, it's a signal to you that your body is getting ready to help you to be better once you take the stage. So if you think of it that way, it changes your mindset and then you'll be less nervous and you'll be better prepared. Yeah, that just makes it exciting. These butterflies are leading me in. That's amazing. I love that. Fantastic. I actually celebrate when I feel the butterflies like, oh yeah, the butterflies are here, I'm ready to go. And you know, so I start doing my little jig and get myself ready because all of this is really a play to get your mind ready. If your mind feels that you're excited and ready for something, then it doesn't need to release all these chemicals to fight fear. It just needs to release enough to keep the adrenaline and your energy sustained long enough so that you can deliver a great uh, presentation. Perfect. I love that. So you mentioned about Toastmasters. So what's the difference between attending Toastmasters to help you become comfortable versus hiring a coach? Okay. So first of all, I am a Toastmaster. You know, I, I finally got my Distinguished Toastmasters a year ago. So this particular month actually made it 10 years that I've been involved in Toastmasters. And I, I still continue to participate in an advanced Toastmasters club. So I'm still connected with Toastmasters. But it's very important for people to understand what Toastmasters is. Toastmasters is a platform that allow, or a program that allows you to become comfortable with public speaking. It gives you the opportunity to deliver speeches. It gives you the opportunity to be evaluated. Uh, and some of the clubs that even give you the opportunity to be mentored, to be a better speaker. But it's important to understand that Toastmasters is not in the business of professional speaking. Right? 
they're in the business of public speaking to help you to become comfortable in public speaking and so that you're in a safe and supportive environment where you're not being judged but you're being encouraged so that you could grow your speaking skills as you go along the difference with using a speaking coach is that a speaking coach is taking that particular speaker to a whole new level based on where they want to go what their specific goals are so in my particular case uh, I work with a lot with entrepreneurs and business professionals because they want to use speaking as a strategy. So they want to have, they need stories. They want to have really good compelling stories, whether it's a client stories, whether it's a branding story. They want to have presentation that's going to connect with their prospective clients. So those are important skill sets. And these are not the things that Toastmasters specialize in. I also work with clients that compete in speech competition. And so sometimes they'll come to me and say, you know, I'm competing, here's a theme, here's my message, I need you to help me to tweak it, to, to, or I need some help to make it better. And so the difference between coaching is really when you look at it as an athlete, right? All the top athletes in the world still have coaches. Tiger Woods still have a coach, even though he makes millions and millions and millions of dollars. There's a reason why they have coaches, because the coaches allows them to be able to, the coaches see what they can't see. So it's up to the coaches to see what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. And also it's up to the coaches to sort of push them to try to get to the, to the next level. And so for me, that's the difference between the Toastmaster and the speaking coach. Toastmaster gets you started on the speaking journey, but a speaking coach gets you to take you to where you really want to go on that journey. So whether that's become a professional speaker or whether that's become a better presenter within your business. And for me, that's the reason why I am a speaking coach is because I love being an entrepreneur, so it allows me to combine my knowledge of entrepreneurship and my passion for public speaking and be able to combine those two things into a package that I'm able to take to my clients. So many of my clients will tell me that they get much more than speaking from me. They get a lot of business coaching, which just automatically happens as we communicate back and forth. Well, that's amazing. I think you're in the right, you, you found your perfect niche and you do it so well and um, your passion and your expertise really shines so well thank you and, uh, and it's an interesting because something happened to me on the way to becoming a motivational speaker that was that was my focus that was my tunnel vision and something happened along the way where i realized that my passion for entrepreneurship and the passion for speaking would be best served serving entrepreneurs not to say that the world can't use another motivational speaker but i just realized that there were so many other motivational speakers out there anyhow and i still will do motivational speaking but my focus really now is using my, what I feel that my special talent and skills is really on the entrepreneurial speaking side of things where I actually help other entrepreneurs become more effective in their speaking and communication. Oh, you do it so well. Thank you, appreciate so, that. You're welcome. How do people reach you to, to connect and get a consultation? Well, the easiest way to connect with me is just through my website, which is speakandgoyourbusiness.com, so make it easy. Uh, if not, they could find me at LinkedIn or Facebook at Marlon Shaw. So, you know, they type in Marlon Shaw on LinkedIn or type it in on Facebook, they could find me there as well. I'm open to giving anyone what I call like a discovery. So we do like a speak and go discovery for 30 minutes. Just it's an opportunity for me to learn a little bit about their business, to see what their long term plans are, how speaking may be effective as a marketing strategy within their business as well. And it's an opportunity for them to get a chance to know a little bit about me and then what I have to offer. And so that's always available to anyone that wants to reach out to me. Then I'll send them a link to my calendar and then they could book a 30 minute session and then we just have a conversation from there. So there's no real obligation on their part because I'm really looking for win-win situation. I'm looking to learn about their business and then I'm, they get an opportunity to learn about speaking as a marketing strategy to see if it's the right fit for their business. Perfect. And what is one your last piece of advice for Canadians right now? Wow. That's I looked at that and I thought, that's such a really loaded question, considering that everything that we're going through right it's, now. It's a big question, but you can take it from whatever angle you want. So my biggest thing that I would share with all Canadians out there is that we're going through some challenging times. I mean, we're dealing with a lot of chaos right now with all this pandemic. And, you know, we have a lot of information that's coming to us from all different levels of government and in and, and between. But my greatest advice to everyone right now is that even in a pandemic, even when we're dealing with chaos, there's an opportunity for you to get better, for you to grow, for you to learn, for you to develop. 
And so rather than sitting back and being passive or being reactive, my suggestion to all of who are listening to me right now is be proactive and, and strengthen your weaknesses. What areas can you be better in right now? What is something new that you could be offering in your business that you have that you've been thinking about and have done and have done nothing about it? This is an opportunity for you to actually get ahead after the competition. And so be proactive, grow, develop new skills, increase the value that you bring to the marketplace or to your workplace, because both of them are very important. So if you're an entrepreneur, it's the marketplace. If you're an employee, it's the workplace. Don't sit back, be proactive, be better today than you were yesterday and plan to be better tomorrow than you were today. That is my advice for my fellow Canadians and entrepreneurs and business professionals out there. I love that. That is perfect. Um, I agree. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here and for sharing all of your great tips. And I'm sure you're going to be helping a lot of people with this information. And thank you for having me as a guest. It's been a pleasure as always uh, working with you. And it's been a pleasure to watch how much you have grown since we started working at the beginning of the year to see where you are now, like eight months later, with your own show, which thank proved you. that once you become, which goes to prove that once you develop your confidence in speaking, it allows you to carry it over to other areas of your life. And you are a living example of your confidence being improved to the point where you're comfortable doing a show and you've done what close to 20 interviews so far. I think this is the 20th. Well, there you go. To me, that speaks volume about your confidence. So congratulations and your part as well. Oh, thank so you so much. I'm so proud of you. I'm one of your protégés. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and I you wish too. you continued success along your journey. You as well. Thank you so much, Marlon. All right. Thanks, Gretchen. Take care. Take care.